In this video, we're going to find the interpenetration curve between a triangular-based prism and a hexagonal-based prism. We're going to start off by completing the front view by putting in our second auxiliary view on the side over here on the left. Whenever we do these kinds of questions, we need to have two auxiliary views, one in the top view and one in the front view. Now I've already drawn in where the shape would go in the front view, but first we're going to have a look at how to get the auxiliary view from our top view here into our front view and with the correct numbering. Because without the correct numbering, then the rest of the method doesn't work. So, first of all, we can see here that I've gone and labeled our triangle here. Uh, this auxiliary view is 1, 2, 3 for each of the corners. And then very simply, I can transfer that numbering from this auxiliary view onto my top view. So, I can know that this corner over there, that's going to be point 0.1. And then, of course, we can clearly see that that's going to be 3 and that that over there is going to be 2. But now, how to get that numbering from here into my front view? So, that's why I've got my little shape over here. And if you get stuck with any of these, you can do the same thing. Okay, make a little shape for yourself, cut it out, number it, and follow the same steps. So, we're going to take this shape and we're going to flop it up and over an imaginary XY line that's between these two shapes. So this shape would go up like that and then we can clearly see that our point 3 over there is going to be that point there and then of course our point 2 okay, our point 2 over here is of course going to be that point 2 over there and then of course there's our point 1 which we can clearly see there. So from that position there, if we take our shape and we flop it over the XY line, we get to that position. And then after that position, to get to our front view, we're now going to flop the shape over our XY line again, which gets us to there. So we've gone from here to there, going over the XY line. And if we have a look carefully now at our numbers, we can clearly see that number 1 is at the bottom. Point 2 you can see first over there and point 3 is then going to be behind it. Okay, you can clearly see the 1 there, there's 2 and there's point 3. So I'm going to label that so long, there's my 1 and then I said that I can see 2 first here and then 3. So that would be labeled as 2 comma 3. Now what does this auxiliary view look like? Well, if we've got our front view like that, now we just need to again go and flop this shape over another imaginary XY line between our main drawing and the auxiliary view. And if we do that, our shape simply flops down like that. And we see that our auxiliary view is going to look like that with point 0.1 at the bottom over here, point 0.3 there and point 0.2 there. So I'm going to label that so long. There will be 3, that's going to be point 0.2. And then our point 1 is going to be down here somewhere. And if we simply go and construct our equilateral triangle, which I've already done in construction there, I can just go and draw in what the rest of that equilateral triangle will look like. And that then creates our other auxiliary view in our front view. So just to recap there again, we're going from here, we're taking that shape, we're flopping it up and over an XY line, which then gets us there. Then we're flopping it over another XY line, which gets us there. And then we're flopping it back again over another XY line, which gets us to that auxiliary view. Okay, now we've got the auxiliary view, now we can start our method, finding our interpenetration curve. And to do that, we start with our, turn, with our termination points. Yeah, we always start with the termination points. And the termination points are the points where my secondary pipe hits into my main pipe. And I can mark those two points there. And then there's one more over here where another piece of my secondary pipe hits into my main pipe. Now I'm going to go and take each of those turning points and I'm going to project them into the front view. So from there, project that line up into my front view, that one into my front view. Okay, now we've got that. We're now going to follow the numbers that we have in the front view and simply go and link them up with our turning points. So, 
Uh, there's our point one, and according to our turning point for point one, or termination point, sorry, for point one, that termination point is there, so we can mark that as point one. That's our termination point for line one. Okay, there's line one, there's point one, we take that up, we line it back up with point one in the front view. Okay, then we can do the same with two and three. There's two and three, they're actually in line with each other, and we can see that they're going to line up over here in our front view, also together, and of course we're seeing two first and then three, the same as what we have here, and that then gives us the termination point for line two and for line three. Okay, termination points are complete. Now we go to the turning points. Now turning points are wherever our shape hits into a corner of the main shape or the main pipe. So wherever our secondary pipe hits into a corner of the main pipe creates a turning point. And we've got two of them. There's one there and there's one there. I'm going to mark those with an X. You can see them. There's our two turning points. Now to get those two turning points into our front view we have to use the following method. We are going to take those turning points and project them across into our auxiliary view in our top view. Where they cut our auxiliary view in our top view, which it cuts two places each, we're going to label those. And I'm going to use TP1, TP2, TP3, and TP4. And of course the TP stands for turning point. You could use letters if you wanted to. That I just prefer using TP. Okay, now that we've got those, we now got to transfer those turning points from here into our auxiliary view in our front view. And to do that, we're going to use our compass and we are going to go and measure from point three. And now you've got to note which line you are we are looking at for your point. We're on line one three. So we're going to take our measurement from point three on line one three. We're going to find line 1, 3 here in our front view, and we're going to measure from point 3 down on line 1, 3 and make a mark. And now we know that that is going to be TP1, which of course matches there. Then we do the same thing for each of the other points. We do the same thing here for our next one, okay, for TP4. Okay, and that TP4 and TP1 are actually going to line up with each other. They've actually got they're actually the same distance away. So if I go and show you this, if I take from point one to TP4 on line one two, you'll see there if I mark that off, that's TP4. So I'm going to mark that as TP4. You'll see that those two line up with each other in that auxiliary view. Okay. Now, the next two, TP3 and TP2, they both lie on line 3-2. Okay, and you'll be able to see that they're actually the same distance away from each of those two corners. So I can use the same measurement I have on my compass. The one's from point 3, and the other one is from point 2. So I can mark those both off. The one from point 3 I labeled as TP2, so I'm going to make sure that I keep that labeling and then the one from point two is TP3 so I'm going to label that as TP3 okay so now we've transferred our points or our turning points from this auxiliary view in our top view to the auxiliary view in our front view now we need to take each of those turning points and project them into our main pipe so that we can find where those turning points lie in our main pipe now if we take this is, of course, where our turning points lie, on this line. So if we project that up and we then project these turning points across into our front view, those two line up with each other. So these two turning points are going to meet at that point over there. And, of course, because we can see turning point 4 first and then turning point 1, as this flips up, like what we did when we got there, remember that that was our triangle, and if we take that triangle and we flip it up now, turning point 4 over there is going to move up in front of turning point number 1. So we're going to label that point as TP4, TP1, just to make sure that we know which point we see first. Then TP3 and TP2, if you project them across, you'll see that they land up slap bang on that corner. And again, you're going to see TP3 and then TP2. 
So I'm going to mark that as TP3 and TP2. Okay, now we've done the transfer of all of our points. Now we're going to draw in the interpenetration curve. So to do that, we're going to use a map, which I always like using the auxiliary view of my top view. And I use this view as my map to tell me exactly how I'm supposed to join my lines. Now the nice thing with this question is that because this secondary pipe is centered with our main pipe, there won't be any hidden detail. Okay, you won't be able to see it because the cutting is going to actually be symmetrical. So we're only going to have to draw one side of it because the other side will be identical to it. So we're going to go, using our map, we're going to go from point 1 to point 2. But according to our map, we have to go from point 1 through turning point 4 and then to point 2. So we're going to go from point 1 through turning point 4. And then from there to point two. That's following our map. From point one, turning point four, then point two. Then from point two to turning point three, then to turning point two, and then to three. Okay, so from turning point two to turning point three first. There's from turning point two to turning point three. Then we're supposed to go to turning point two, which is on the same point. And then we're supposed to go to point three, which simply brings us back along that dark line. And then point 3 to turning point 1 brings us back along that dark line. And turning point 1 back to 1 back along that dark line. Which is just a repeat of what we already have. So no hidden detail. And we have our interpenetration curve complete. And because these are two pipes sitting into each other. We're not going to draw a hidden detail line in there. Because the one pipe hitting into the other has created a hole. Okay, which of course goes through both the shapes.